Hi everyone, I'm Eric and this is my van. It's a 1977 Volkswagen Westphalia. Westphalia refers to the whole camperized version of the van. This was Volkswagen's second vehicle. First was the Beetle and they called that the Type 1. This was the bus and they called it the Type 2. This is the second generation of the bus. The first is the really old ones you see with the split window where the windows all like lean out and has some of them have 21 windows. This is the bay window, so it's the second model. They made this for all of the 70s. Volkswagens of this era, especially with this, it was they were trying to do create a vehicle that was like for the people and very basic, very, I don't know, more efficient than like a 5.7 liter Chevy engine. So it only has a two liter motor, so it doesn't go up hills very fast. It's very basic. So being like a German vehicle, Germans have a very good way of engineering things as long as you do them the way they were meant to be engineered or meant to be done. If you do it any other way, it's not gonna work. Like the door, for example, to close it, you have to like, you can't just slam it and you can't just lightly close it. You have to, the whole process, like you hold it on the front, you have your hand on the back, and you kind of throw the door in, but very gently and opening it's the opposite. You gotta push it out. There's a lot of quirks and stuff like that, but there's a lot of really like, I don't understand how well they designed this vehicle like for example when you open the door right as you get in like the door sill is actually a step so you can get on the roof to get to the luggage rack if you push too hard the door will literally fall off so, <laughs> but i mean that's if you throw it shut pedals are hilarious because most cars uh, you have a bar coming down with your pedal so when you push it it's going into the firewall but these pedals are all like you're driving a public bus they go into the floor and it's the weirdest thing because you're not pushing that way you're pushing down and it really tripped me out at first. The other really weird thing is you're sitting on top of the tires. So when you're turning, you're turning in front of the, at the front of the vehicle. It's the weirdest thing. There's no engine in the front, the engine's in the back. That really tripped me out at first. And I still can't parallel park it. It's the weirdest thing, but soon enough. So this van I bought on the island, uh, Vancouver Island, a uh, little town called Mill Bay. This was the best deal I could find. It was sitting in a barn in Alberta for five years before the uh, guy I bought it off of got it. He had it for a year sitting in a field and when I called him up I asked him if it was running and he says I haven't started it in a year but if you want it I can have it running and ready to go in a week. So yeah I pretty much bought it over the phone, rode my bike to the ferry, took it over, rode down to the guy's house and drove the van to California the next day and yeah obviously there's some problems but overall man I made it mechanically ran, but yeah, a lot of little things. Cobwebs, right? You gotta get all that shit out, but a lot of WD-40 in this one. He tuned up the engine. He has a restoration business, so I didn't have to worry about the engine too, too much, but uh, yeah, one of the big things was the filler neck had a crack in it, and so the gas was, there's fresh gas fumes coming into the cab, so that was bad, because you could just smell fresh gas. There was a little crack on the exhaust, and it's an air-cooled engine, so there's no radiator, so to heat the van, you have channels that run around your exhaust that pumps heat that or air that's gone around your exhaust into your cab. So if you have a little crack in your exhaust, you're just getting exhaust pumping into your cab. That was the other problem I had. It's not exactly too safe. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, I was driving through Portland and it was a super, uh, super, super rainy day and I had my wipers going full blast and I'm going down the I-5 and all of a sudden my wipers are going like this and the driver's one just stays up while the passenger keeps going. <laughs> so I ran out of wipers. The synchros are going in the transmission. So for me to shift into third gear, I have to double clutch. So pretty much I have to take it out of second, put it in neutral, take my foot off the clutch, put back on the clutch, then throw it into third or else it just grinds. That's annoying. It doesn't have a lot of power. It's not very good on gas. But uh, in that, it's shown me to slow down and enjoy the scenery. So, you know, it's a bit of a trade-off. It's almost worth it. Uh, the big thing I did was the paint. My dad helped me out with that. I'd never done it before. He's done eight or nine cars, so he's got a bit of experience. Uh, the previous owner had dinged up the front, and so this was all like pushed in, and he got some really crappy bond bondo job. and just kind of bondoed over everything. And uh, when we started taking it apart, noticed the bondo wasn't even attached to the metal. There's just like a layer in front, and there's water in between. So we had to completely redo the front end. Uh, we had to cut chunks of the front end and weld in new pieces and brand new bumper, everything like that. Uh, we had to remount the tire. And then I've done a lot of little things to the inside as well. A lot of like cleaning it up, because I mean, 
sitting for, I guess, six years. That's quite a long time for mold and algae. When I bought the van, I started, uh, started my YouTube channel called Westphalia Life, Life on the Roads. And um, it's just kind of videos of me and kind of my experiences with the van, uh, how it's been and everything. All right, time to enter the beast. Come on in, boys. Make yourselves at home. You got your kitchenette kind of area here. You got your sink. That's the pump I was telling you about, which is supposed to have the water tank in here, but I don't have it, so that's not a big deal. Um, pretty simple inside. I got my storage in here. Got all my kind of kitchen dry food, stuff like that. Got all my spices and stuff in the back. One big modification I did is with this van, this particular year, you couldn't set up the table and have your bed set up. So what I did was I notched out the bed, like a little U in it, so I could have this bed or this table set up. Show you guys quickly. So I can have my table set up so I can be eating and I won't have to set my, like take my bed down, put the bench up. I can have the table set up. So I actually have a video on this of how I did it and everything. So you can check out the channel for that one. Um, yeah, I'll keep that swung out so you can see it here. This is the refrigerator in there. Okay, well, that's gonna be in your way, but yeah, fridge is in there. You got your panel in here because you can plug into uh, 120 volt or you can run off the spare battery. So your breaker, everything's in there. Move that back. Yeah, it's pretty cool. This is your uh, spare bed at the top. So this is what they call the pop top, the Riviera pop top, and it pops up on an angle. This folds out and that's your second bed. Yeah, so this is the front end. This is the captain's chair. It's got manual steering, so you feel pretty strong at the end of the day. These are the pedals I was telling you about. As you can see, they go into the floor versus going into the firewall like most cars do. Same with the gas pedal, it's just like, it's a weird lever. And it's really weird because it's kind of, needs to be oiled, so it's kind of really rough when you go at first. It's a four speed man manual transmission. There you go, your e-brake, simple enough. Uh, I installed a CB, uh, so you got like your mic, you can talk to the truckers and everything. Um, it's got a PA as well, so I have a speaker underneath the van, so if someone's taking too long to cross the street, I can let them know. Uh, simple enough, what else? I put these baskets in. Um, you see the uh, beetles of this era have these a lot. It's pretty, it's pretty easy, I just three or four screws. I have a video on that too. Um, yeah, they're pretty cool. Uh, nice for your cell phone, whatever. And uh, sometimes when I brew coffee uh, back in the kitchen, I can put it up like kind of on here and it won't fall off. I don't have to worry about cup holders because there's none in here. Um, yeah, it's pretty simple. The headliner, the fabric was coming off, so I just decided to let my friends go crazy and just draw all over it. So now it's kind of got a little bit more of a style to it. And I'm kind of starting to do the same with the canvas of the pop top because it's getting pretty old and has a few little holes and tears. So I just said, whatever. We'll draw all over it and make it look cool. So this is the back. I had a little bit of a leak coming in from here and it was dripping down. So I, you might be able to see here, it's all rusty. There's not too bad, but right there is the real problem. So I don't know how long this thing was leaking for before I got it. This was already rusted out. So what I did was I took some really strong sticky back tape and I put two strips of it across and super glued it on. And that's actually been holding up pretty good, so my feet aren't wet in the morning if it's raining out. That's kind of nice. I got little storage compartments here. One cool thing is right here. Um, you can open this up. And you got your engine. Uh, it's a nice little access point because you can get to the top of the engine. Um, there's another one you can get to the front of the engine, so that's pretty cool. 
close this up. I'll show you the actual engine. There's your little air cooled two liter engine. Pretty simple. I don't have the spare battery in, but that's where it goes. The other battery is on this side. Um, yeah, it's simple enough. This is your motor that I was telling you about for the heater. And so what it does is it takes air. First problem is that it's taking air from your engine bay. So it's already not clean air that it's trying to pump into your cab. That's the first problem. Pumps it through these hoses, which go down and underneath your exhaust channels and then it pumps out straight. So I just disconnected it completely. Um, yeah. And one note if you're gonna buy one of these is a little access door that you don't really see that's back there. And that's how you can get up to change that fuel. Um, fuel neck, like valve that I was telling you guys about. So keep that in mind because it would save you having to drop the engine.